Well, this looks like it's gonna be a slightly shorter clip than usual for this game. Part of me wouldn't mind if it was shorter, since it is an audio commentary, not text like I usually do. Ah well, we're still making progress at a pretty reasonable rate at this point. What fresh monster are we going to have to deal with now? Ah! One of the ing themselves! No alternate form and no possession bullshit. Understandable, since this is their home, and they aren't damaged by the atmosphere here. And I assume the possession thing is to avoid getting hurt in light Aether's atmosphere, like we are damaged in this world's air. Unfortunately, our first fight against a very scary ing is when we're in an energy field that constantly heals us. This is absurdly easy for us in this circumstance, when this thing is probably meant to be a scary fresh beast for us to have to worry about. Again? I feel like they didn't playtest this game. Does this poor bastard just not have any means to actually remove a significant section of our health to compensate for us constantly healing? Holy shit, I should not be feeling sorry for the ing that we're fighting right now. Yeah, not even mildly worrying, and that's supposed to be a scary form for these things. The possessed pirates did a better job causing damage, even when you don't take into account the healed damage that we took on that ing. Hell, just walking around out here is more dangerous than uh, some of the actual enemies trying to kill us. And that's really not making the ing feel like a terrifying force that they need to be. Though, maybe that's my fault for having high standards for armies that are trying to be scary. Yeah, definitely burning more health just walking around than fighting at the moment. I wonder how long until the Ing get the idea to start destroying light-generating crystals or removing those floating bits of energy. Dark Samus certainly showed that's a possibility early on, and the Ing were most certainly watching that. And great, now I'm just waiting to heal for a bit before we push onwards. Not especially interesting, but hey, if it gives us health, then why not? Right, seems we need the spider ball to get on that thing to the top. Maybe that will send us to the missile expansion below, but that's just a guess. Another ing attacking when we've got an energy field to keep healing us. Excuse me for feeling little to no fear. Okay, so that shockwave implies that this one is a bit special compared to the first one we killed not too long ago. As boss fight areas go, this certainly has enough room. Well, I've got to admit, I did not see this one coming. Hell. I honestly thought this was just another large crossroads, like so many others we've gone through. At least this boss has the sense to try pushing us out of the energy field that's constantly healing us. That's clever of him. He's even trying to take cover up there, though unfortunately the only attack he can do from up there is easy for us to dodge, meaning we can take our time and heal down here. So he's not a perfect attempt at countering the whole healing by staying in the light thing, but at least he's an attempt. I can't help feeling that he feels easier than he was probably intended to be, and that makes the especially challenging bosses to come feel actually kind of more understandable in a sense. Hell, this feels like the easiest boss we've had to deal with so far, and he's the damn third one we've run into. The first one should be the easiest. 
It feels like this game is throwing bosses at us more frequently than the original Metroid, and if they were doing such a rush job, they maybe thought that on paper each one was a progressively more difficult fight than the last. Eh. If they didn't have time to uh, do any playtesting before release, then they wouldn't have been able to catch that this guy would feel almost like a joke to deal with compared to the first two. They couldn't have known that bosses frequently breaking our lock-on would feel so damn frustrating with these tank controls. And since this was before games started getting updates via the internet, hell, the GameCube and Dreamcast didn't even have internet connections as far as I'm aware. If the PS2 had something like that, I never figured it out. And when I tried the original Xbox Live, I was convinced as fun as online play might be, it just wasn't my thing. So really, the only time this game has ever been updated, as far as I'm aware, was when they released the Wii version, and Metroid Prime 2 got the lion's share of the updating to boss design and various other factors. And to be fair, using the Wii control scheme thought up for Metroid Prime 3 really helped eliminate part of the problem with lock-ons breaking. Hell, I'm pretty sure I didn't do all that much locking on when I got to Metroid Prime 2 on the Wii version, outside of maybe wanting to do some sideways dashes at times. Eh. It says something that I'm more interested in talking about internet connectivity for old game consoles and Wii controls than I am to talk about this specific boss. Once you figure out how to prevent this boss from kicking you out of the constantly healing field, this fight is a complete joke. A very damage spongy boss at that. Probably another reason why I chose to do the more frustrating GameCube version of this game rather than the Wii one. My thumbs aren't as easy to tire out as my index fingers, and using a mouse to keep shooting this rapidly would not be pleasant. Even if it's not an especially grueling fight overall, it just takes a while even if you know what you're doing. And even as unthreatening as this guy is once you can avoid getting pushed into the toxic air, he is still troublesome enough to be worth calling a boss. Oh, if only he had a more inspiring name than Jump Guardian. I swear, even throwaway bosses from previous Metroids typically had better actual names instead of placeholders like this. Not that I remember most of those names anyway, just the creatures attached to them. I just had the awkward thought of if this thing gets killed while it's on the high ground. While I'm pretty sure that the upgrade would come down to our level, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't, simply because the Rush game designers might not have taken that into account, though I'm probably being a bit too harsh in that regard. This is, after all, Nintendo, after all. They might release with an odd difficulty curve across the game, but they won't release an absolutely broken mess even when they're in a hurry. And considering some of the broken messes I've seen from 2020 to 2022, even Nintendo at its worst is better than many AAA studios in that set of years that rely on people just installing updates to fix them. And that does it. We've killed the boss and now we have the ability to jump higher. I wasn't expecting that to be our next upgrade, but hey, I'll take it. I think a few of those bits of energy fell right in the toxic air. Not that we need the extra healing after the way that fight flowed. And of course, Samus jumps higher than we could ever actually jump with the very upgrade we just got. Why am I disappointed that the boots on our suit don't actually look any different when it's not like we get to see Samus' feet outside of cutscenes anyway? Eh, it's just funny how that sort of thing can work.
I'm sure we should have scanned that before I killed it, but to be fair, us losing health at that rate really made me want to get a move on. Just how embarrassing would it be to kill a boss just to die running down a hallway? Okay, I've got no clue why I decided to turn back, especially considering the sheer amount of damage we're taking out here. Right, not a surprise that destroying those containers isn't going to make up for us bleeding health like that. Again, they did a damn good job of making Dark Aether feel oppressive, even if it feels like a lazy way to do it. It's just such a shame that one of the things that helped make this game's atmosphere feel more brutal than the other two Metroid Primes is also one of the more frustrating aspects and makes other frustrating things worse by just existing. I know they only had so much room to work with on a small GameCube disc, but still, there had to be a way to make Dark Aether uh, oppressive without just coding in air is poison until character has suit of this quality or higher. And when we actually do have suits that will prevent us from being damaged here, that's just going to erase such a big factor of difficulty that it's going to be obscene. And I'll probably be bitching too much about the game going out of its way to give us equipment I really would have appreciated a hell of a lot earlier when we finally get it. Mostly because two of the very specific bosses I'm remembering being so damn bullshit, they're the reason I keep glancing at an invincibility cheat for when I just want to get a move on and don't care about honorably making progress. Right, let's see what's on the other side of the missile door. So this is the room where we have to bring in the three keys. Why am I having odd flashbacks to that Buffy the Vampire Slayer game that was an Xbox exclusive? It's not like three keys were especially annoyingly done in that game as far as I remember, but I'm pretty sure this game is going to just play this card over and over again. The first key really wasn't all that far away, was it? Now, if only I felt confident enough to say the rest for this first temple are gonna be that easy. Okay, stupid idea to try to go that way. If I had bothered to use the translator program we'd just gained before we went through the portal, would I have gained an extra energy tank? Because if so, I'm going to slap myself. Bloody hell! I don't mind feeling weak at the start of a Metroid game, but this is just damn ridiculous when we don't even need a breeze to potentially topple us over. Please don't let this be another mistake. And it's another mistake, not even an energy field on the other side. I appreciate us waiting under a healing field, but come on, open the damn door. If the damn air is giving us near-death experiences, then the sooner we get to a safe point, the better. I'd rather not have to go through all that again. And great, despite the fact that we're still early in the game and this clip can easily be under half an hour long, I just want to start fast-forwarding already. My kingdom for some more health. Not that I have a kingdom. Hell, 
I'm not even sure I would trust any place that would call me king unless I had some damn reliable people that I could trust to help run it. And those are more imaginary than the kingdom itself. And great. We're not even going in the direction of the save point yet if I read the map correctly. Right, back through the path that I interrupted for myself for a little to no reason here. Yeah. This place is a desert of health. You lose it so much you constantly wish there was more. And sometimes just looking for some makes things get progressively worse. Please tell me the portal opens from this side and I'm not just wasting my damn time and draining our health over and over again for nothing. Given the lack of hostiles we've seen since beating that boss, something tells me it's not especially promising to go this way. whenever we want. That's comforting. Granted, we're gonna have to come back to Dark Aether again at some point, but I'll take what I can get when I find it. Recording to logbook. I was somehow hoping that the portal to the light world would look more comforting. Instead, it looked pretty forgettable. But then it's not like blackish smoke in a spherical shape is all that uh, striking either. It's just... eh. Thankfully, we have full health as we deal with more space pirates. I'd ask why these specific enemies keep spawning in here, but I suppose that's one of those questions that isn't really worth asking. At least I've gotten enough of a feel for them to avoid getting mangled this time. Right, insert bomb here and get a missile expansion. I wonder how long until I finally start using the orange translator program. It's not a major thing, but I still feel like a moron for not doing so just as we left the temple on the light side. And the save point is in this room. Definitely a damn good time to take a break, unfortunately. It's going to be a frustrating amount of time before we get to the save point after this, according to the raw footage. 